working through the week here, trying to get through a couple of things. Um, you know, Draylon Washington's going to be out this week. Uh, he is progressing and doing some things, but, you know, we kind of talked about it a little bit on Monday, I believe. We're, we're going to make sure that he's, you know, we're going to make sure that he's good to go before we put him in a position to have to go out there. Um, you know, getting Quentin Williams back is huge uh, for us. You know, that's more depth and a guy that was really pushing for that starting spot. You know, I don't know that he's quite where he was, certainly after being out for as long as he was, but, you know, we need to get him back in the mix and get him uh, in the rotation, get him playing a little bit as well. Um, and then Mason Narcisse will be back this week, which uh, certainly is good news for us. You know, we, we've missed him and uh, having him back has been good in a lot of ways, you know, but certainly on the field is one of them. Um, you know, it's kind of that time of year. You got some some bumps and bruises and things like that, but we've got a lot of guys that are pushing through and, you know, um, expect to have, you know, pretty much everybody ready to roll here. So Quentin will probably, you will try to get him some playing time? We will play him some. I, I don't think that it would be good for him or for anybody to play him, you know, try to just roll him and let him go. I mean, we're talking about a couple, two or three series, most likely, you know, just to kind of get him in the mix and right, get him playing a little bit. So, uh, yeah, he, he's good to go. He needs to play. You know, we're going to play him. Uh, sometimes, you know, the, dicta the game dictates how much, you know, that is. And, you know, certainly we're going to watch him, you know, and see how he plays whenever he's in there. But, uh, but yeah, he, he will play this week. Yeah, no, we, we just we're gonna give them, you know, whenever we decide, we're gonna put them in for a series and you know and, and let them let them go. How do you anticipate um, I guess handling rotational at running back? Do you, do you try to give Jacob a few more carries or do you try to spread it out a little more? I mean, I think we continue to do what we've been doing. I mean, I think Burge has done a really good job. You know, he he uh you know, those guys he kinda has it mapped out how he plans on playing them a little bit and you know, at the end, they have certain situations that some of them are better than in others, you know, particularly different third down situations. Um, and he does a good job getting them in. Uh, but no, I mean, we're going to let him go like we talked about from the beginning. I mean, you kind of, you know, whoever's got the hot hand, if it's Jacob again, then, then we keep rolling. And, you know, I mean, shoot, if it's somebody else, and that's great, too. You know, that's that's the, the good part about having good backs. What, what do you think it's a matter of time or what is it going to take to kind of get Zylan going to where we talked about? how he's, you know, his skill set and to kind of to where you, you can get some big plays out of him. Well, he ran pretty well. He had a pretty tough deal there when he got credit for the, the fumble. So, you know, I mean, he, he ran the ball well. He, he's hard to get down. Um, you know, we're constantly talking about, you know, things that we can do to kind of get him loose and trying to evolve to use some of the guys that we have. But, uh, you know, I mean, he's done a good job for us in the run game. I mean, he's one of those guys you don't have to block it perfect and he can make one miss. You know, he had a – he had an eight yard gain the other night where we get beat, you know, on the on the single block immediately. He makes him miss. He gets in, you know, he gets to the second level, you know, runs through an arm tackle and spins out and gets eight. And it's pretty pedestrian on the stat sheet, but it's uh it's it's pretty it, it's pretty critical in the game when he has those plays. So, you know, I mean we're gonna keep playing him. Can you talk about how uh Landon Burton has progressed in his career kind of starting center for the great team? You know, I mean Landon's a guy that, you know, we recruited out of high school pretty hard, which, you know, a lot of our, our guys end up walking on. We do, you know, um, kind of just didn't end up, end up working out where, you know, we ended up signing him out of high school. But we were excited about Landon from the beginning. And, you know, the thing about him is, you know, I think Landon gained a little bit of weight, was a little bit overweight as a senior. And I think he didn't move quite the way that, you know, we wanted him to. And that probably maybe hurt him immediately, you know, in the offering process. Uh, but the quality of kid that he is, the work ethic, I mean, the things that those guys at St. Thomas More have said about him and the way he works and his leadership. And, you know, we've watched him play in high school, you know, a number of times. Um, you know, since he got here, he's been that guy. And every day he comes in here with a great attitude. Every day he comes in here ready to work. Um, and he's really developed into a leader on that offensive line. And, you know, I mean, last year he was really ready to go compete and maybe take that starting spot last year um, in spring and unfortunately had an injury. And that really hampered him all year. I, I don't. I don't think he was healthy at all last year. You know, even whenever he was cleared to play, I, I don't think he wasn't close to the same guy. It's just kind of our situation just dictated that we had to play him. You know, just kind of where we were up front. Um, so him having a full year to get back. I mean, you know, he, he works his tail off and everything that he does. And I mean, we, you know, we've talked about it today. I mean, the, the hard work always pays off. I mean, it, it just 
you know, it's not an accident that the people who work the hardest end up being successful, and, and Landon's one of those guys. If the receivers keep progressing that seem to be progressing right now, how much – is there any flexibility or is uh, switching positions something you kind of have to do in the August or are you going to kind of stick with it? Or how much flexibility is there? I mean, a guy like Peters played multiple, but mm -hmm. some of the younger guys, is there any flexibility or not really? And, and, and in the instance where you had to, yeah. Um, but, you know, we kind of like where we have those guys at. I mean, I think they fit those positions really well. You know, Coach Leger talks about it, you know, in recruiting. He talks about building a basketball team at receiver, and that's kind of really what you try to do, you know. And, and you got, you know, you got a couple guys, you know, on the outside that are tall, that can go, that are long. You know, you got those, you know, inside guys like Jake and those guys that can really work the slot and do some things in there and be tough. But, you know, I don't see us really moving those guys a whole lot. I, I like where they're at, um, and I like the way they're playing, um, I think. You know, whenever you got a guy that's in there and he's full speed, four or five, whatever reps in a row, and then the sub comes in and he's just as good and he's full speed the next four or five plays at corner, it's tough. You know, so we, we kind of like where we got him at. At cornerback, is there any not so much changing of the depth chart, but this guy's going to play a few more plays or that or after last week, or is it just let's get better and do what we're doing and let's just get better? No, we're gonna keep. We're gonna keep. We're gonna stick to it. You know, I mean, we didn't play well. You know, I mean, and we didn't on defense. And that's, you know, I mean, those days, those things are gonna happen. And it's not because we don't think those guys can play or know those guys can play. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that go into it, and there's there's blame to go around everywhere. You know, I mean, whether you win or you lose, you know, and there's things that we all can do better. And it's certainly not just those guys. I mean, you know, they had a couple tough plays. Corner's a hard position to play. I mean, when you get beat. It don't matter if it's your fault or not, truthfully. It always looks like it's your fault. And you have to be wired a certain type of way where you can line up the next play, you can go, you can go press, and you can go do it again. So, um, no, I mean, we're going to continue to play the guys we're playing, um, and they're going to continue to play better. And, you know, we're going to coach them harder, coach them better, um, and put them in position to make better plays. Is Mason kind of on a pitch count after the time he missed or not really? The last two days of practice, I would say, no, he is full go. He, uh, he, he came back and – you know, this is the, the best thing for him, too, you know, to be back now and be back around his guys and everything. And, uh, you know, he's excited to be back. But, no, I, I, I think Mason will be full go. I mean, you know, I, we don't play anybody the whole game, you know, and certainly don't want to do that to him either. But, uh, no, I mean, he's he's looked really good, you know, the last two days, and he's he's in really good shape. You know, he just uh, – I was a little worried maybe last week just if he was coming back on Thursday and – how much he really had got to rep it and how much we got to see him. I was a little worried about that, but now getting him for a full week, he'll be he'll be good. What have you said when Amir was in here yesterday, he seemed unfazed by the whole, you know, it's a big game and all this kind of stuff. What have you seen from the team in general this week? Just their mental approach. I mean, every game's a big game, you know, when you do it the right way. And I mean you know, I mean, people try to build it up. You know, it's more than what it is. I mean, you know, every game matters to us. You know, I mean, I don't know a better way to say it than like, I mean, you only get 12 opportunities as a team. So, you know, this isn't baseball. And I mean, I, I love baseball. I grew up playing it, love it. I mean, they get to play, I don't know how many games they play in a college season, 50? 50. 50. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, and that's awesome. Dex came talk to our team and he told us, he was like, you know, what you guys do sucks. You know, he's like, it's hard. You know, he goes, I mean, y'all don't get, y'all practice all the time. And he said, that's why I coach baseball. But that's kind of why I love football is because, you know, you don't get immediate rewards all the time, you know? And even when you do it right and you work really hard and you do those things, sometimes it's delayed. But every game is really important. And our kids, I mean, we haven't talked about this one meaning anything more than, than the last one or the next one. I mean, it's, it is a great opportunity. It's a good football team. You know, we need to go play well. You know, we got to play really well on defense. We got to play really well on offense. We got to play really well on game changers. I mean, these guys have a good team. You know, yeah, they've given up some points. Well, Georgia Southern scores a bunch of points. That's they always do, right? I mean, they score a bunch of points. I mean, against you know Sun Belt defense. You know, in Georgia Southern, I mean, they play good football. So, you know, for us, it's everyone's big. And and I mean, you know, to think that our kids don't kind of get that, I, I don't think that's fair to say. You know, I mean, they, they get the gravity of it. I mean, I mean these guys, you know, you, you get you get a four-year career and you get 12 games a year and you work – I mean, you work your tail off from the time that you realize football is what I want to do. 
and then all of a sudden it's gone like that. So, I mean, they're all big. And, you know, I mean, we're not making this more than what it is. I mean, it's a game against a really good team. We get to go on the road again. We get to try to do that better than we did it last time. Um, you know, we get to go try to play better team ball this time in all three phases. So, I mean, it's more about us improving our processes than it is kind of anything else. Well, you know, I mean, obviously pressure is always really what you want, but when they get it out, like you're talking about, it's it's hard to to get, you know, pressure. I mean, because the ball, it's it's one step and it's boom, boom, ball's out. Um, all defensive coach, D-line coaches everywhere, they teach, you know, when you read the pass rush, you get in the pass rush, and once you're not getting home, you get your hands up, you know. And so it's kind of what you teach, and you hope, you know, you hope you can get some of those. Um, but, you know, I mean, it's really just pushing the pocket, trying to make them uncomfortable and, you know, there's a cumulative effect, I think, to like always kind of being in his lap, even if early on he's completing them. But you're always in his lap and you're, he's always kind of got it right in his face. It, it wears on you a little bit in that position and it, it makes it hard to continue to be accurate. So, you know, yeah, we, we've got to get pressure. We've got to try to get our hands up. You know, we've got to do a good job matching routes, you know, with what they do, which is hard because they, they do a lot of fast out stuff and get guys in space. But, uh, you know, I mean, it'll be one of those deals. It's going to take a, a full defensive effort you know to be able to kind of hopefully to slow that offense down to the point where you know you can go out there and go play play a game that you can end up in a position to win in the second half